Good evening, Munir Ajam. I hesitated in uh, publishing this video because it's personal and it's about a personal career. And usually, uh, sometimes when people talk about a personal career, it might be misunderstood. So I hope uh, you take this video as an opportunity to learn uh, about a career path of someone who has been who dedicated pretty much his uh, professional life to project management. Uh, so I will share with you my career path uh, from basically the beginning uh, until today, or probably will not focus too much on recent times. Uh, I started uh, my career, actually, before I started my career, I should go back maybe a little bit, uh, back uh, backward. I came, uh, I'm Lebanese uh, native. I went to the U.S. when I was about 18 years old to go to college at the University of Houston in Texas. I studied English first because when I went to the U.S. I knew no English. Uh, basically, all I knew is a few words uh, because my original uh, language is uh, in Lebanon. We studied English, uh, Arabic and French. And I was uh, in French. I was really lousy. So basically, uh, I, I did not speak good French to go to a French university, and I spoke no English, so it makes sense to go to the U.S. Uh, so basically, I went to the University of Houston and uh, studied English first, and then uh, civil engineering. I graduated in 87, but between 1984 and 1987, I was working as a cooperative education student, which is like as internships. Co-op program in, the, in some universities in the U.S. is basically you go to school full-time one semester, then you go work full-time as a semester. Um, this is one reason, for example, it took me five years to finish my engineering degree uh, because by the time I graduated, I had two years' experience working as a co-op, and I used to work for the light company in Houston uh, in their high-voltage distribution power line on the foundation system. So basically, I was starting to specialize into foundation system and geotechnical engineering. When I graduated in 87, uh, the economy in Houston was very bad because of the oil prices, and Houston is highly dependent on oil. So I uh, went to California um, to work with a geotechnical environmental consultant doing geotechnical environmental investigation, site remediation work, and also quality control on construction site uh, for geotechnical work. So basically uh, excavation, foundation, piles, uh, and some of the project were at the University of California at Los Angeles. So I spent about two and a half years doing that, and uh, that got me interested very much to go back to uh, construction rather than just engineering and, and geotechnical. At that time, I got accepted at the University of California at Berkeley to do a master's degree in geotechnical engineering, so I decided to shift to engineering and construction management. And then I graduated in 1990. When I graduated, I was hired by Exxon Chemical to work on their project management division in Baytown, Texas. So basically, I ended up going back to Texas, uh, working in the Baytown area, which is east of Houston. Uh, it's part of the energy, corner, uh, energy concentration area where a lot of oil and chemical companies are based between uh, east uh, uh, Texas and Louisiana area. In Exxon, I started my career in estimating, estimating project, which is grassroots and revamp project, or brownfield and greenfields, what some people like to call them, uh, all over the world. Basically, most of my projects were in Texas, but I've done some projects in Europe, but, uh, and the one in Japan, but mostly estimating only. And then um, I was uh, assigned to the Baytown Chemical Plant, uh, in Baytown to work as a project engineer, which means, obviously, as a project engineer in a petrochemical company means that you are basically the project manager for small and medium, uh, small project, basically, not small and medium, small project, which means project between 200000 to about $2 million or $5 million, and this is back in 1992 data, so about 25 years ago. Uh, after a while, working on uh, managing multiple small projects, uh, we had a mega project in Singapore, was uh, starting to uh, happen, so I was brought back to the core uh, project management, central project management organization, uh, to lead an estimating team to develop multiple estimates for the Singapore uh, project, which was a mega project, about $800 million 
1994 currency. Uh, it was a joint venture. Uh, once the project got approved, uh, it was uh, we awarded the contract to uh, APC uh, on a cost plus reimbursable incentive fee. And I was fortunate to be assigned to the project as a project control engineer, where we had to mobilize to the UK uh, to work uh, to do project control at the engineering office, which was in uh, near London. And then uh, from the UK, we ended up going to Singapore to work on the construction project. And we did a lot of modular work. So it's a very interesting project. Um, and uh, we were in Singapore for a while. So working as a project control engineer, as I mentioned, it was a mega project, uh, cost plus incentive. So when you have cost plus and you are on the client side, um, you're accountable. Yeah, so as, uh, you have to worry about the cost and the schedule and quality in all of these areas. Obviously, I wasn't the one. I, was, I wasn't alone. I was part of a team of about 20 people, actually. We had a good-sized team managing that big project. But I was responsible for all project control, uh, estimate, uh, control uh, change management, um, currencies, forecasting, because in those days we did not have the euro. So we had multiple currencies and we had purchases from all over the world. It was uh, probably the best experience of my life working that project. While I was on that project, uh, just before we finish, uh, Exxon had asked me to come back to the U.S. where they had an alliance contract uh, that will, that's doing all the project within the Baytown area, which is five facilities. We have five plants. And we have one contract, one alliance contract, which is a long-term contract, and they do all our project. Also cost plus incentive driven. And those projects, we were, were having quite a bit of difficulties in the area of control. So Exxon have asked me to come back and join the project management unit or department, basically, uh, and to establish within that project management department a project support office, uh, project support and control, cost and schedule, uh, and uh, all other support uh, to help the project engineer in the area of their projects. Um, so we had a small team. We started working and we had a lot of challenges. Uh, again, this is something maybe I will talk about in the future because it's quite an interesting situation. Uh, we solved these challenges. We solved this problem. It was time for me to quit. I decided to leave and go on my own. So basically uh, start my own work. And uh, I end up basically being hired uh, for another mega project in Texas this time. My ex, so one of the ex managers that was I working with in Exxon had retired, and he started doing uh, like a head hunting and consulting. So he hunted me basically to come and join this team, but as a consultant. So I wasn't an employee of the joint venture. It was a joint venture project. Um, similar to the Singapore project, similar size, similar cost, about $800 million, uh, 1998 currency. Uh, but they did not have any project control, so I was hired to become the project control consultant specialist on the project, uh, leading all project control activities, progress, change management, um, all of these areas. Uh, while we are on that project, we end up also started another project. And at that time, I was also assigned to lead the project control activities and the negotiation for part the partnership in the area of cost sharing and all of those things. That was good experience as well, uh, especially that I was actually a, an outsider. I was not an employee of those joint, of any of the three joint venture companies. Uh, actually, three companies. There were the first project were two companies, and the third project it was three companies. So it was a great experience, uh, although that project failed, yeah, and uh, that by itself is an interesting story for another time. I uh, got an offer from Saudi Aramco to come to Saudi, and I was expecting my first child. So my wife said, I do not want to raise my, uh, my son in the U.S., although her family is there, I want to go closer to our home country. Uh, which is Lebanon, but Saudi was close enough. So um, I had started a small company in the U.S. 
I was planning to start hiring some support because uh, the work that was starting to demand that it needed more than me. But we had to put everything on hold and sold everything and left the U.S. That was at the December 29, 2000. So at the very end of December 2000. And we came to Saudi Arabia where we spent five years. While at Aramco, I was involved, the first project I was involved in is cogeneration generation power plant. But then um, um, we had another senior manager that came to manage our department, which was responsible for about three, three or four billion dollars worth of project. So he took me from that project and assigned me as what we call continuous excellence facilitator, uh, basically to work with the department managers uh, in, in order to look for areas where we can improve our performance. And I was also asked to lead uh, a small unit, was called the Human Resource Development, which means to work on developing our staff, which at one point was 300, 300 staff, so mostly engineer, working in this project management department, which is one out of about eight departments in Saudi Aramco for project management. So we had about, uh, as I mentioned, about 300 employees. We had a lot of projects going on. Um, so I was responsible to, uh, to look for the career and talent management, basically, for our staff. Uh, also, while during those assignments, I had the opportunity to work with other people within the project management organization on working on competence development framework uh, for project engineers and for cost engineers. So my opportunity at Aramco was more as a consultancy uh, for continuous improvement and uh, human resource development. While at Aramco, a few friends and I decided to start a company, and Sukad was born in August 2004. And August 2005, a year later, I left my job in Aramco, and I joined Sukad full-time, and uh, I, become, I became, at that time, the CEO uh, of the company, leading the work, and uh, all the consultancy and uh, training uh, work that we do. Uh, over the years, we've been focused mostly on estimating, uh, uh, sorry, on uh, training and development, but we've done also a few consultancies. And personally, over the last few years, say maybe six or seven, I've been working on developing methodologies and organizational system, and uh, actually almost 10 years now, since 2007, and publishing books and uh, blogging and writing, and recently these videos. Uh, it's time to end this video. Uh, again, I hope you look at it as a career, a typical, not a typical, I would say, but I mean as a career path of a professional who dedicated his life to project management. And how can one progress from engineering design to quality on a construction project to a master's degree to estimating control, project engineering, construction, uh, small project, multiple project, mega project, cost plus, three, lump sum, all type of different projects. And had, uh, I've had the pleasure and the opportunity and have been privileged to work on, on such a diversity of project, which is obviously what made me today. Um, and although I've been around uh, engineering and project management for 33 years, I still consider myself a student and learning Project management today is so huge, uh, you can even do a PhD in it and you still don't know enough. Again, that's why sometimes I get frustrated when I hear people, you know, barely out of college and they call themselves project management expert uh, or they have mastered project management. I have been around, as I mentioned, for 33 years and I dare say that I've mastered project management. I'm still learning every day. I read a lot and uh, learning never stops. Uh, as I mentioned, project management is huge and the opportunity for learning is huge. And I encourage you to continue to learn and don't focus on certification. Certification alone is nice, but it's not good enough. There are a lot of ways to continue to learn and excel in project management. Um, thank you. And I hope you have been patient enough to listen to the whole video. And I would say good night until another time.